um, our Commissioner of Public Health, and to my left is Dr. Nancy Glick from Sinai Health Systems Infectious uh, Disease Division. We call this press conference today to discuss the very concerning increase that we are seeing in COVID-19 cases across Chicago. Make no mistake, we are in the second surge. And here's why we say this. Over the past two weeks, <clears throat> daily cases have expanded to an average of over 500 new cases every day, which is more than a 50% increase since the beginning of this month. This is the highest daily rate we've seen in Chicago since the tail end of the pandemic's first wave back in May, and is coinciding with a worrying increase in hospitalizations. Although our average number of positive tests is now over 500, we had almost 800 positive tests reported in a single day last week, marking the largest one-day jump since May 21st. These numbers are extremely troubling and are consistent with what we've been seeing across Illinois and really across the country and world, where COVID-19 cases in Illinois have risen by more than 70% over the past two weeks and COVID-related deaths have jumped by nearly 30%. That's the Illinois figure. Meanwhile, many of the areas with the worst outbreaks in the country are occurring just north of us in Wisconsin. Folks, make no mistake, this is the second surge that Dr. Fauci and Dr. Arwady have been warning about since March. We are now in it. And the reason should not be any surprise to any of us. Let's take stock. COVID thrives in enclosed spaces. And as the weather cools and people spend more time indoors, the chances of outbreaks and new cases go up exponentially. We've been talking about these kinds of risks now since the very beginning of this pandemic's entry into Chicago. And this is exactly what we're seeing everywhere across the country and around the world. Here in Chicago, we must do something about this. You and I individually must do something about this right now. I understand that a lot of sacrifices have been made over these many months. And I also understand the fatigue factor that people have. But folks, given what we're seeing and the, the incredible escalation of the rates of cases every day, this is not a time where we can indulge in COVID fatigue. This is a time for us to be more diligent and more determined to fight this deadly disease. This is a critical inflection point and a time for us now to make some changes. And on this point, I wanna be very, very clear. We have tried to be prudent in reopening our city and using the dimmer switch, not a light switch. And many people have done a terrific job in adhering to the public health guidance. I wanna thank in particular individuals, healthcare workers, first responders, and our various businesses who are literally hanging on by a thread to make sure that they can be part of our future and not our past because the businesses have closed. But this is a time for each of us to dig down even de deeper and be more diligent. And if we don't see a dramatic turnaround in our numbers and soon, then we will not hesitate to take the steps that are necessary to save our city, to save our residents, and even if that means going back to some of our phase three restrictions. The rising case numbers we're seeing um, here are happening across the board. The conversations that I've had with Dr. Arwady and her team is, what's the source? Is it specific? Is it targeted? What interventions can we do uh, to push back on and mitigate against these surging cases? But the truth is, it's happening across the board, across every age and gender across north, south, and west sides, among black, white, Asians, and brown residents. That's a tr the troubling trend. We're seeing this uptick, and Dr. Artie will go through some slides that really um, show this um, in a very graphic way 
every age group, every demographic, every or area of the city is seeing a dramatic uptick in cases. And I'll say again, I know we're all tired. I know that being diligent in the fight against COVID takes a psychological toll, takes a physical toll, but we have to be diligent and push aside the COVID fatigue. When we let our guard down, if we pretend that COVID is not the deadly virus that it is, the result with certainty is sickness and death. And now, as we head into the fall and winter months, it is the worst possible time to let our guard down. The virus is real, it is deadly. Already this year, tragically, over 3,000 Chicagoans have lost their lives to COVID-19. And unfortunately, it, we see a daily uptick in those cases. Every single day, someone dies in Chicago from COVID-19. That has not stopped. And you need only talk to the families who've lost loved ones to this disease or the individuals who have gotten on the other side of it, but have lingering physical and mental effects of this disease that they are struggling with long after they have uh, tested negative. Stopping COVID-19 spreads starts with each one of us remembering precisely what is effective in the first place. And of course, it starts with face coverings. Folks, these work. This isn't a partisan issue. This is not up for debate. It works. It saves lives. And we've got to double down on wearing our mask. We've got to double down on maintaining social distance. I've heard some disturbing reports that in certain venues across the city, in some businesses, in some big spaces, in some houses of worship, that people are not taking it seriously. They are gathering in mass and endangering themselves, their loved ones, and our city. We also have to not forget that we've got to wash our hands regularly. We've got to take every precaution in our toolkit. We have the power to bend this curve back down in the right direction, but we and you and each of us has to be diligent. That means we as a city government are looking at every tool in our toolbox, including rolling back to phase three restrictions or other measures as needed. Now, let me be clear, I don't wanna go there. Uh, particularly for those who are in business, the small businesses who have already suffered through a very difficult year. This would be tragedy for many of them. But I've got to do what is right to protect us from this virus. So please join me in this fight. Each of you, everyone, double down, be more diligent in what you're doing to fight this disease. Let me give you a few more facts. Two-thirds of those who got COVID-19 got it from someone that they know. We know that through case investigations and contract tracing. What this means is it probably came from your friends, your family, or a coworker. That means that if you spread it, chances are you'll be spreading it to someone you know. And let's not forget what we talked about months ago about what the risk levels are. If you're in a gathering of 10 randomly selected people in Chicago, there's a 14% chance that one person in that group is infected with COVID-19 right now. If you're in a group of 25, that risk factor jumps to 30%. And in a group of 50 or more, the chances go up 50% that somebody in that group is infected with COVID-19 and on from there. And the reason this exponential growth is, is, this is the reason that this exponential growth um, is happening. It's because the more people gather, the more opportunity there is for COVID-19 to spread. That's why we need to keep our group levels and gatherings as small as possible. On top of sticking to the fundamentals of wearing a mask and social distancing, we also need to be vigilant on limiting the number of people we come into contact with on a daily basis. Now, I know this is easier said than done, 
particularly for essential workers who can't um, work from home, many of whom are black and Latinx and have already been disproportionately impacted by this disease. But what we can control is our home environment, which is why we need to be limiting the number of people who are coming into our homes. Now, over the course of the summer and the fall, when we were feeling a little bit of comfort, what did we start doing? We started having dinner parties. We started pe inviting people over and to sit in the backyard. We started having card games and family gatherings. The normal things that we do because we are social beings. We like being around other people, particularly our loved ones and our friends. But I'm here to tell you that that has to stop. And it, particularly as we are coming on Halloween and then Thanksgiving and then Christmas and Hanukkah and other holidays, we have to be diligent to keep down the number of people that we are allowing into our homes. And I want to speak to our young people as well. We have increasingly seen large gatherings of unmasked, unmasked young people walking down our streets, whether bar hopping, traveling in large groups to someone's apartment. Folks, that has to stop. You are not immune to the effects and the ravages of COVID-19. We see that in the data. You are getting infected. Now, your symptoms may be less extreme, but when you get sick, you take that with you. You are infecting your friends and your family. You are not immune just because you're young, just because you're 18 to 29 or 30 to 39. This has to be an all hands on deck moment for all of us. And I wanna say this again, our first line of defense against the spread of COVID-19 is through the actions that you and I take as individuals every day. Not just some days, but every day. When you leave your home, you must wear a face covering. Limit the size of your gatherings. Limit, if not eliminate, bringing other people outside of your bubble into your home setting. And Dr. Artie will talk in a little more detail about what that means. Now, we have not seen the kind of challenges that our neighbor to the north in Wisconsin or Iowa or Indiana or even other parts of Illinois. Why? Because you have made a commitment to your health, the health of your family, the health of your city. Now is the time for us to re-engage in those things that we know that work. This is a warning sign. This is a call to action. This is the thing that we need to do as a community to protect ourselves, but also to protect each other. We don't want to see us have to go back to the kind of restrictive measure, measures that were commonplace in March and April and May. But if we need to, we will. I won't hesitate. This is about saving lives. It's about saving your life and a life of somebody you love and you care about and about the life of your neighbor and the life of our city. We can't get through this without being in this together. We prolong the misery that we're seeing spiraling up, that it means more devastation across the board, more deaths, more sickness, more businesses and livelihoods dramatically and maybe irrevocably impacted. Now is a time for each of us to step up. And I call upon our fellow Chicagoans to be with us, everyone in this fight. This is our moment to make the difference in what our future is going to look like. Thank you, and at this time, I invite Dr. Arwady to come and say a few words. Doctor. Mm -hmm.